In this video, we're going to learn about Campaign PreCheck. This tool is essentially a full pre-deployment checklist. It not only provides you with email previews, but also has a bunch of content checking steps. The great thing about Campaign PreCheck is that you don't have to be a developer or even know much about HTML to make corrections to your email. To create a project, we can either copy and paste our code, we can email it directly from an ESP, or we can enter a URL. Next, we're going to look at workflows. Since Campaign PreCheck walks you through a lot of different steps, you can set up a custom workflow if you want to skip over certain steps. Here are all the different steps, and we can toggle them on and off. The transitional pages give you some information about the next step you're about to click into. This can also be turned on or off. I will now click Next to create my project. The first step here is Inbox Display, where you'll enter your sender name, subject line, and pre-header text to see how it will show up in the inbox view for various clients. Now this is just for visual purposes, so you will still need to enter these fields to the actual email in your ESP prior to deployment. However, with the preheader text, whatever you input into this field, we will add that into the HTML for you. I also want to note that at any time, you can access the hamburger menu up here and skip around to different steps. Some of these steps require a premium subscription or higher. The next step is accessibility. We have several accessibility features to make sure your email can be read properly from a screen reader. The first thing we'll wanna do on this page is set an email title to give some more context for the screen reader to read. You'll wanna set the content type, which ensures that the screen reader knows how to interpret the HTML. Most emails are going to be UTF-8. We'll also set a language. The language part here does not act as a translator, but it does tell screen readers how to interpret the text, characters, and accents for optimal pronunciation. So, for example, if an email is written in English, we wouldn't want the screen reader to read it with a French accent, so we would choose English. You'll now add presentation roles to any tables in the email. Adding a presentation role to tables will tell a screen reader to skip reading the code that creates the table and only read the customer facing text. With the click of a button here, Campaign PreCheck is able to make these changes for you. Now you will want to remove title attributes. Title attributes typically give additional information about elements in your email. For example, hover over tips. But title attributes should be avoided as they can disrupt the order in which the screen reader reads the content. The next step is adding alt text to our images. Alt text allows you to describe images to users with visual impairments as the screen readers will be reading the alt text. For images that don't need alt text, just add a blank alt attribute. This will ensure that the screen reader does not read the image's URL path. Now, we'll check the contrast ratio. Contrast ratio is the difference between foreground and background colors. This tool compares your email against international accessibility and compliance standards and makes suggestions. The next step is to make links more accessible. Subscribers with a color deficiency may not be able to see clickable links if they're highlighted in blue, red, or green. Underlining clickable links helps address this issue. The last accessibility step is our Zoom tool. This allows you to see an email how it will look when it's enlarged. Keep in mind, we do not alter your code at all with this step. This just allows you to preview how the email is going to render when enlarged. At any time, you can go over here to this dropdown to view what the email will look like 
in a colorblind view, as well as several color deficiencies. We can also see what this template will look like if a user were to have images blocked. Next up is our URL validation feature. This feature is a real time saver as it automatically tests the URLs in the email and allows you to preview the links right from the main page. You can either upload a spreadsheet if that's where you're storing your links. Otherwise, we'll grab them from the HTML that was provided to create this test. You'll notice the option to preview the URL right from this page. Clicking this will take you to the destination in the link. Next, you have the details option. This ensures that each URL opens successfully on various devices and shows you how long it took to direct you there. If needed, you can also edit these links directly in the tool and we'll update them in the HTML for you. Our UTM tool allows you to add parameters to your email for better tracking in Google Analytics. You can skip this step if you're not using Google Analytics. If you are using Google Analytics, you can go ahead and add your campaign info here. The next step is images. Our image validator will make sure you're not missing any important image attributes such as border or width. This next step here will only be visible if you have a GIF in your email template. Unfortunately, not all email clients display animations properly, namely Outlook. So they default to displaying the first frame of the GIF. This tool allows you to pick and choose which frame should be displayed as your first. Next is to optimize the size of your images. To make sure your email downloads as quickly as possible, we recommend keeping each image under 200 kilobytes. We will compress images if they exceed that size and host them for you. Keep in mind, if your image far exceeds the 200 kilobyte recommended size, we will only compress the image to an extent as we don't want to jeopardize the quality of the image. You also have the ability to look at the total email download time. Our spell check tool reviews your email title, alt text, pre-header text, and the body of the email, and will make suggestions if it detects any spelling errors. We will also scan for words that may be offensive. The next step is domain block listing. We'll check the domains in your email against four of the top block listing providers. If a domain comes up as being block listed, we'll provide a link to their site so that you can take the necessary steps to get off of the block list. Our next step is spam. We'll run a spam test through various filters and we check the email content, subject line, HTML, and images. These are mostly pass or fail results and we aren't given any reasoning behind why an email may fail. We do have lots of spam related articles in our blog that can give some insight and deliverability tips. It can take up to 30 seconds for the initial results to start trickling in and up to 10 minutes to get results back from every filter. We've now reached the email previews. It will first have you confirm your subject line and the email clients that you want it to test on. Here is where you can choose a custom set of clients or submit the test on all of our available clients. Click run test when you're ready to submit the content for rendering. As our results start to come in, we'll be able to click on the individual previews here. Our collaboration features include the thumbs up, the thumbs down, the ability to add comments anywhere onto the preview. A 
As far as the thumbnails, we can leave them in this cropped state or we can extend them so that we can view them side by side. Right here is where we can create a share link that can be shared with anybody to view this test, even if they do not have an email and asset account. The final campaign pre-check step is the summary page. Here, we'll see an overview of all of the steps that we completed. We can edit the title of this test right here if needed. We can also see code changes side by side. We can now download the assets. What this will do is provide you with a zip file containing both the original and the modified versions of the HTML. If our image tool compressed any of your images, you'll also find the updated image in that zip file. You can go to this hamburger menu and go back to any of the previous steps if needed.